Welcome back to the glass house. It's a very wet Saturday afternoon in the middle of January. Uh, very wet in the garden, but also very wet in the glass house as well. As you can see, if I look, show you there how wet the sand tray is. This is the first year I've had these, so I've had no experience before, but there must be water getting in uh, somehow because it's like that all the time uh, although luckily I've got a self-watering system here for my uh, seed ceilings in the pots here which is good um, not so good the amount of water I need to sort this out move the heat out of the way there's some water trapped behind the bubble wrap there in the ceiling so uh, here, partly today, to repot my begonia venosa, which I bought from a supplier on Etsy, um, and it got quite battered in, journey, in the travel uh, and lost a lot of soil, so I need to pop that up. I've had it actually a couple of weeks, doesn't seem to have done any harm um, not having much water at the roots because well, it seems to like the dry, which is good. But the main reason I'm here is for a huge unboxing of plants from a supplier in North Wales called Krug Farm Plants. I was given a voucher for them for Christmas and uh, I spent a couple of hours browsing through their catalogue. So I'm going to open that and hopefully, anyway, capture that on, open the box, I mean, and hopefully uh, capture that on video. Here we go. So as you may be able to tell from the box, uh, I've had it uh, for a few days. It got a bit wet out in the rain and uh, I had, have had a sneaky peek in there. I can't believe I've had it for two days and not uh, taken all the stuff out. But uh, yes, I've had a sneaky peek in there. So here we go. Wow. So the first thing, if I can get it out carefully. I say the first thing, you can see the first two things. Well, in fact, let me get that one out. I was gonna try and get the third out, but let me get out this amazing begonia. Try and lap it. Begonia chituensis, I think it's called. I had no idea from the picture on the online catalogue that it was so big. Yeah, there we go. Begonia chituensis, a species of this mostly tender genus that they collected from the central mountains of Taiwan uh, from a deep, I think this is rising, I haven't got my glasses in, having largely obtusely ovate, obliquely ovate, uh, nearly succulent leaves to 30 centimetres, bearing auxiliary uh, some place now, bearing auxiliary signs of pink flowers, etc. That is a beauty. Look how big that leaf is. It's a little bit battered, but I don't care. That is an absolute stunner. The Crook Farm plant owners are Sue and Blevin Wynne Jones, uh, and they've been at Crook Farm for nearly 30 years, I think. Um, and they are proper plant hunters, as in they go on expeditions and bring black, bring, bring back uh, little known or unknown species of plants. And they've got a great begonia collection. That, <clears throat> excuse me, that has surpassed everything I expected. I had no idea the leaves would be so big. That is going to be stunning. Look at that. Look at that. The beautiful red of the new leaf unfurling. Go the way. Yeah, that's. Oh, yeah, look at the roots on that. That's ready for repotting sometimes. I'm really chuffed with that. That is a beauty. So, that is Begonia chitoensis. Brilliant. Oh. 
So the second plant I'm going to pull out is this fern. And like the begonia, absolutely blown away by the size of these leaves. So this is a polystichum munitum from North America, an evergreen tough fern, which can form extensive colonies uh, in the wild with broadly lance shaped, finely divided, fairly upright fronds to one meter tall. That is a beaut, look at that. Ferns are one of my favorite types of plant. That doesn't bother me, they've got no flowers on them at all. I just think they're such beautiful plants. You can see I've got a cluster of ferns down here in the corner and some pots under the bench down the end and there's some planted in the gravel under the benches as well. Right, this is going to be a challenge. So, let's have a look. Right, so what? Hands. to lose that label. When I had the email back confirming they got all the plants, Sue said, I will dig the fern up, and they surely have, haven't they? Yeah, that will need to go in a pot. But look at that in there. My hands are filthy, sorry. The fronds ready to unfurl. That is beautiful. I'm so chuffed with that. I mean, it's got two decent sized fronds on it. There and more to come. So I've got a pot. There, which I will see if, oh, sorry. There you are. I'll see if it fits in to that. I'll have to have a play around with that. But no, that is lovely. So that is a polystichum munitum. Okay, so that was the fern. There are two or three more begonias. The box has been in the glass house since last night. And as you can see, there's been water dripping into it. So it's very, very wet. However, on the plus side, it means it's easier to get the plants out. This one, I have no idea, I can't remember, well, I wouldn't know because I ordered a few. This is one of a number. I suspect this might be one that's deciduous. It's a begonia because I ordered five, I think, begonias and one fern. I do have the fern. It might be a deciduous one. Yes. So this. Is a pot of earth. But actually, uh, Begonia sicimensis, Begonia mm, pantherensis, mm, formerly known as, identified as Begonia sicimensis, but now considered to be a recently described species first discovered in eastern Nepal, collected as a dormant rhizome. So that's what they've delivered it as, a dormant rhizome you can feel there you have can you see that i can't tell the softness of the soil there but the firmness the rhizome is in the middle there so although i'm sort of disappointed it's not in full flow it's like the ones of the games i've got under the bench there you can see they just they look like just pots of soil with a bark topping but they have got a rhizome in them so that's something to look forward to in the spring and summer right so there are two more plants in here that box there is just empty for packing i'll take out what looks like another uh, deciduous one very hard unwrapping 
or undoing knots with one hand. There we are. I didn't point out the label before, the back of the label anyway. There we are, Krug Farm. And Carnarvon in North Wales. So this, another begonia, begonia annulata. What I'll try and do is put some photographs of what these look like from the uh, Crook Farms website because I appreciate having a pot of soil is not the most exciting thing to see but that's another one that they'll pick uh, that sorry they'll pick there's another one that will grow from a rhizome under or inside the pot there I'll tip that into the top of the pot in a minute Okay, so that's those two bare-stemmed ones. Is that the right phrase? Anyway, deciduous. Uh, the last one isn't. The last one's got leaves on it. Begonia versicolor. I'll try and get that out. Typical. Oh, I was going to say typical begonia leaf. Sorry, typical begonia leaf furry, but actually that's been. That's a shame, that's a new leaf that's been broken off and damaged in transit. One-handed bag opening again. Now this was one I'd seen last year and wanted, but they didn't have it uh, in stock. They hadn't got any to sell on. So I was really pleased to be able to get uh, my hands on it this year. It doesn't look an awful lot, does it, with the sort of the state that the leaves are in over winter. They're quite hard. I'm hoping they're not too, they, you know, that I did choose the plants, they would be okay in the glass house over winter. It's almost like leathery-like texture to the leaves. So they should be okay in the glass house over winter, just heated to about five to seven degrees. It's a shame it's lost those leaves, but they looks like as a sort of a healthy rhizome in the soil. So again, hopefully over the summer, that will fill out. Yeah, that's lovely. You can't really, it's difficult to tell. And you can hear how thick the leaves are. Beautiful veining underneath. The veins tinged with pink against the background, the green background of the plant, of the leaf, sorry. Close I can go. Look at that. I can see it better on the camera actually than I can in my hand. Get closer. That is beautiful. And then the leaves have this uh, dark green background with sort of pale, light green stripes on it. And that's a newer leaf where the the what what is a dark green background on that leaf is still sort of fairly red and that matches the pinkness of that leaf that was broken off. Is that a leaf coming there? No. But again, a lovely, lovely plant. But I think my favourite has got to be this begonia here. Chitoensis. That is a beauty. Well, that or my fern. Oh. Very pleased that plant pull from Krug Farm. They they're a very good supplier. I'd recommend uh, you if you wanted to get some unusual plants, uh, having a look because they've got a big range there of unusual and species plants. Um, I can't take my eyes off that. Look at that. The fat bud coming out there as well. So, there we go, that's my plant haul. Now to get rid of the cardboard box waste. Right, anyway, sorry, um.
yes anyway thank you very much for watching if you have watched this far a shame that's a leaf that's broken off there yes thank you very much for watching if you have watched this far and uh no doubt through the spring and the summer i'll be giving you updates on how the uh deciduous begonias are doing those new ones there plus the ones that i've had a while under the bench here all right take care have a good day Yes, anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you have watched this far, a shame that's a leaf that's broken off there. Yes, thank you very much for watching if you have watched this far. And uh, no doubt through the spring and the summer, I'll be giving you updates on how the uh, deciduous begonias are doing, those new ones there, plus the ones that I've had a while under the bench here. All right, take care, have a good day.